this video, I want to talk about uh, how I sometimes do my glitch breaks without using uh, Glitch 2, which is a paid plugin that I usually use that I've talked about in other videos. Um, I'm going to say up front, this might turn into a pretty long video. I haven't actually shot it yet or edited it, which I guess I'm going to do this time. Um, but fair warning there. And uh, I'm also super high because I have a weird doctor thing today and tomorrow. <laughs> But I can't do anything basically, and I'm bored out of my mind. So, and in a lot of pain, I'm just smoking weed all day. But what I've done here is I've taken a project of mine and uh, I've recorded this track right here through the end of this sort of this all blue section uh, just to get a cut of a piece. So, when I generate my glitch breaks, I'll take almost universally. There's other ways to do this, but normally what I do is I just take something that already exists in the song, say, this is where I want to put a break, take some of the audio or uh, MIDI that's already there, and then just render it all into an audio sample. Sometimes I'll do multiple tracks, sometimes I'll just do one. So for this one, I decided to do just this one track here, which sounds like this. And so that's all recorded down here. And so then on this track, uh, what I like to do when I'm generating glitch samples is throw in as much random as I can in a controlled way. So like I'll have randomness within like a region. So it's like normal sample and hold shit within an upper and lower bound on a, on a, on a, on a parameter of whatever it is that I'm going to be working with as, as an effect. And, um, one of the things that can be nice is like some of the plugins that are free or that are built in your uh, DAW might already have some randoms. Like in Ableton, most of what I'm talking. One more thing about this is that uh, I'm using Ableton, so some of the stuff will be Ableton specific. But my experience has been at looking at or working with other DAWs that there's some kind of analog to do a lot of the automation I'm going to do. It just might look different. Like actually, in a lot of ways, in uh, in FL Studio. Uh, the some of this automation stuff can actually be easier, in my opinion, than it is in Ableton. I mean, it's minor once you know either one the difference, but I still think it's a little bit more straightforward and easy with three loops. But let's um, pull out auto filter really quick so I can show you what I mean about having built-in randomizer. So in this case, this LFO piece on auto filter in Ableton has two different versions of the sample and hold thing. I think this one, if I remember right, runs through, I never use it to so forget, but this one is just a straight randomized um, LFO type of deal. And then you can change the rate here. So normally I like to do, depending on what I'm working with, but most of the time I like to do it in time with whatever is going on in the song, just so a lot of the changes don't happen like in weird spots, but sometimes, Having weird shit happen that sounds gross gets you really interesting gross sounds that you can use. It's up to you. I just lately I've been really on these synced things. And then um, I don't know, maybe I'll do like a an auto filter here. This is just the auto filter at 326 right now. Let me hear that up. But if I increase this, then what it'll do is it'll changes the amount um actually i don't even know how this one's routed tbh uh my, my brain was that it would affect the envelope but i don't think it does i think it directly just affects the the frequency so i'll do stuff like this to kind of chop things up a little bit make it sound a little funky and in different ways and so i like the random because it'll go through and uh everything will sound a little bit different in the way that the effects applied to it. So you get a, a large variety of samples. And, and usually when I'm generating samples for my glitch breaks is I want as many as possible that I can reasonably handle because I'm going to cut, you know, anywhere from like half to 90% of them out um, in the end when all said and done. And so I just want like the best ones that are going to fit in, in, in the mix. Uh, another thing I like to do a lot is Redux. And so I'll throw either built-in Redux or I have some free plugins that I use too sometimes that I'll, I'll 
uh, use for this. And um, I like it when the rate can be different. Like I don't want it the same amount every single time. Granted with this auto filter now, it's affecting it a little bit differently because different pitches going through with this reduction in sampling, uh, it, they, the effect sounds different on different frequencies. But um, what I'll do is I'll just throw, uh, Ableton has a built-in LFO this way. Other DAWs will do their LFOs maybe in, in different ways, but this is sort of just like its own effect. It's a modifier that'll affect an effect. And so I'll, I'll put this on random. And again, um, try one eighth again, see how this sounds. And then I'll just map this to here. So now it's getting a different amount every time. But I might not want it. I usually don't want it to go that low. Let's maybe go down to 30. And if it goes up too high, it doesn't sound any different. So maybe I want that so that every once in a while it doesn't sound like there's some redux. Actually, maybe I do. Let's play. And then the other thing I like to do is if you add a little smooth to this, it gives it a little bit more kind of like... You get some more of those like talky sounds and robot sounds and stuff that like, yeah. Time effects can be really fun for shit like this. You can get some really cool things in there and it'll really mess with stuff. So what I mean is like if I, if I use a, a reverb, uh, let's use uh, Valhalla Supermassive. So this is a free plugin by Valhalla. You can get, there's a website right there on the plugin so you can see it. And um, I use this a ton, partly because I just like the interface and how everything's kind of put together, but also um, So then I'll put all this shit together like this, um, just randomizing a bunch of stuff along the way, but let's just like fuck this up hardcore real quick here. So uh, what else do I usually like? Let's get some, um, some saturation on here, maybe. Oh, overdrive, I forgot that's a thing. That is a thing. Did you know that's a thing? It is a thing. And then I'll LFO this, this full too. Uh, let's do random still and let's do like eights and we're going to map it to how about the drive. Yeah. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now let's put some delay on it. Uh, this is a fun one. Usually I'll use just the built in delay. I like Ableton's delay plugin. Um, but this delay is a free plugin that exists also and is fun. Um, actually, pretty good. Okay, that is just wild enough that I am for it. Um, so then uh, this chaos mode is what's kind of fun about this, but this is gonna introduce a lot of randomness to what I'm generating here. And then one of the other uh, three plugins that I like for this is I like to cut these up with a gate so I get clean samples to choose from. You don't have to do that. But if you do wanna do that, um, the one I've been using for this, and this is great for a lot of other stuff also, I'll do an even shorter vision, vision, vision. I'll do a shorter version of a, a glitch gen deal where I use just gate lab and filter step and kind of show you how that works to uh, that's a problem for future AC. So in gate lab, when I'm just trying to cut it up with the gator in the steps, I'll just do two steps and whatever size I want them. So this would be Essentially, the samples are roughly one sixteenth note, but the sections are cut into eighth notes. Um, and so, let's see, one eighth quarter.
Okay. So I think. And then we just render it and we've got a bunch of samples now. So that's how you do it. Freestyle. <laughs>